Hi everyone. We just got off the back of recording our inaugural episode with Steve Ostad, which I thought was great. Uh, I, in between episodes, I, I get to hang out with, with Stella, our, our editor here, uh, who is a PhD in pharmacogenomics. She stepped away from the bench to follow a career in science communications and has been touring the world for the last few months. And I'm really interested in what she took away from that first episode. Hey, Gordon. I liked a lot uh, the story about the lion. That was really funny. Um, it's it's kind of nice seeing yeah. how he went from, you know, playing with lions to playing in the lab. But I, I guess I have a question. When you talk about the evolution of aging, you know, there's stories about the possums that Steve mentions and then, you know, this idea of reproductive cost. What exactly does that mean for all of us? Oh, it's a really good question. I mean, well, first of all, it's, a, it's just an interesting biology question, right? You know, Darwin told us survival of the fittest and all of that. And so what on earth is going on with us? And when you look at biology, when you look at young animals, everything seems to have a purpose. It's there for a reason. You can see why it evolved, the intricate machinery and every piece just working so well together. And then what the hell happens during aging? It all starts to fall apart and it's a profound mystery. So I think that, that sort of intellectual mystery is really interesting, and, and but, but it goes beyond that. It's really important because we're at a point where we're talking about intervening in aging. And it seems like aging has a different evolutionary biology origin from other biology. And what does that mean for us? And you mentioned uh, trade-offs. If we're intervening in aging with a drug that's slowing down an aging process, is there a trade-off? And what does that trade-off mean? Is it, is it a lower fertility? Is it a slower growth rate? Well, you can say, who cares if you're intervening late in life? But does that trade off go into the next generation? So I think it's really important that biologists study the, the evolutionary biology of aging and also the, these specifically these physiological trade offs. So should we be cautious of you know drugs that are developed for aging? Well, I, th I think we are cautious and luckily we have the regulatory frameworks and FDA and all the drug approval things to, to be able to proceed in, in a way that's safe. That said, though, I think that, that we really should be studying this biology. And I, I, I really want to know what are the various, we can call them side effects, and all drugs have side effects. What are the various side effects we might expect from an aging intervention specifically? Yeah, I'm curious about that too. Next up, we have David Sinclair, who's doing really amazing work in aging. But also, he's doing a lot of science communication work, just like me. Yeah, David is super famous. His lab is doing great work in stem cell related therapies for uh, important diseases. So I want to ask him about that. And uh, I also want to ask about his, uh, his book and his advocacy for aging research over the years where he has been very prominent. So can't wait. <laughs>